Hey, hey guys. guys, welcome back to the Dow Team Podcast. We're back with another freaking banger episode that you guys have been waiting for for the longest time. And I mean the longest time since this weekend. <laughs> the super long time. Yeah, it's been, I know it's probably like not that long, but it has been that long. For us at least. Yeah, it's been Especially like freaking, the flights, bro. Oh my. Oh my gosh. So they probably, okay, for those of you that don't know what's going on this podcast, we're going to be talking about our Mexico trip. We're getting right into it because every podcast we go on and talk about this and that and that, and nobody cares. So we're getting straight into the podcast, straight into the chit chat. Babe, my mic sounds dumb. Do you guys hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you good. I feel like I'm not really like speaking. Everyone cover their ears because Nat's not the best host on this podcast. Sorry. Is that better? Is that, yeah, yeah, is yeah, that yeah, audio better chilling, right there? Chilling. I think it would be better if we were like here, but I just can't do that shit. So, <laughs> um, Okay, so we're getting into this amazing, amazing podcast of Mexico. So we told you guys last podcast. Um, Where we're going. We're going somewhere like fun, exciting. No, we told them we're going to Mexico City. <laughs> Oh, shoot. Yeah. Sorry. We told them. So we told you guys we we're going to Mexico City and we we're going to go see Bad Bunny and like all that. So we did. Right. We filmed that podcast on Wednesday. We ended up leaving on Friday. No, Thursday. We ended up leaving Thursday night, headed out to Mexico City. Um, Started off rough. Like, Very rough. No, started off rough before we even got to the airport. Any of that. Like legit started off rough when we were here. The flights were literally like foreshadowing what was about to happen. Did you realize that? What do you mean? Because it was like. It started off rough, and then it only got rougher from there. Yeah, it truly only got worse. But it was a really fun trip. I do want to say that. We got to, you know, see Bad Bunny, and it was a very adventurous thing, and I think we learned so much from that. And we got to see Mexico City. Dude, Mexico City is so active, even at midnight. It's like L.A. times a 1,000. It's like what you expect New York to be, because it's like the city that doesn't sleep. Bro, Mexico City does not sleep. Mm -mm. Taco stands open all day. Yeah, it never does. And it's like traffic all day long. Like legit, Ubers like, Ubers take like five minutes to get to you. It's very fast, everything. Yeah, it, it was definitely an active city. But with that being said, let's get into the story time on what happened to Mexico and why we probably wouldn't be here if we would have waited two more minutes and we would have been, you know. So, so a little bit of context: our friends invited us to a Bad Bunny concert last minute. Yeah, we canceled everything. We're gonna go. Yeah, super super last minute. I think they called us on the Tuesday or on the Monday. It was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. It was the Tuesday, and our flights were supposed to leave on the Friday, which we actually left on the Tuesday, Thursday. But it was like super last minute. Like they called him, and then they were like, Let's "Hey, go. he's like, what are you, what are you guys doing this weekend?" And then I'm like, "Nothing was good." And then they told us if we wanted to go to a Bad Bunny concert, so we went. Yeah, so we ended up just fucking counting everything because Bad Bunny all day, every day. So that's we crazy. Legit. <laughs> okay. Damn. <laughs> Canceled everything. Called Ellie and Thea's boarding train. Um, and we're like, Hey, can you guys take them? And then they said yes. And so it was okay. So I was kind of tripping out because I didn't know when the flights were going to be, what time, um, like how we were going to get to the flights, what, what airports, nothing. I did not know anything. We found out the information very, like the day before the night before we left, we found out the information for the flights. It was so last second, but it was, it was because it was cool. no, it's because Jacob had the like connection. Like Jacob was the one talking to his friends about it so i didn't know eh, like if nothing zero like i had no clue what was going on i knew we were gonna leave either that morning or the next day but i didn't know what time i didn't know anything i just knew i probably had to be packed but i didn't really know so there was no communication on my end he knew everything so i was so like what the heck is going on so anyways last i'm like jake you need to find out what airport we're leaving through and what time like like asap so he asks and then they tell him um, whatever. We pack our stuff and we had to leave. Supposedly the flight was supposed to be at 11, but then the flights moved for some weird reason. And then, um, so when they called us and they're like, we have to leave earlier. Sorry. Like the flights are, I don't know. They didn't give us an exact time. And we're like, oh shit, like bet. So then we grab our stuff. We're heading out and we're already late because the flights were earlier, even though we thought they were later. Oh my gosh, this makes no fucking sense. But mm. we started leaving. Right. And then bam. Go, go. I, I like it. I like okay, it. Okay, sorry. It's because then then you don't talk, and this is the Gentle T podcast, not just my podcast. It's okay. Go, go, go. Okay, so anyways, bam, we hit fucking traffic, and we're talking like 20 minutes to move like one mile, and this is on, we're literally on route to take the dogs to the day, daycare place, and then from there, we're going to head out to their house, right? Okay, well, no, not right, because we took forever. So then we end up showing up to the daycare, like, at almost 6, but we were supposed to be at 6 at their house. This whole mess, traffic, we were stopped. I don't know why there was so much traffic. It was just a nightmare. Well, there was so much traffic because it was, like, 6 p.m., 5 p.m. Everyone was getting off of work, so. I just don't know. Maybe that's just the traffic over there in that area, but nightmare, nightmare, nightmare. Like, it was crazy as hell. And whatever, starting off rough, right? 
we end up going to our friend's house, and I'm over here like, Jake, tell him we're almost there, tell him we're almost there. Like, Dude, Nat is like the worst person <sighs> to like be late with because she doesn't update anybody. She's like, all right, we're going to be there in 15 minutes. And she's not honest when you're going to be there in like an hour. I was like, bro, I was being honest the entire time. And if I was your friend, I would hate being your friend because of that reason. Me too. Nat's yeah. like the worst person to update you. But then I'm embarrassed to say it, so I'd rather just like. But wait, then on the other person, they're not going to find get, out. They're not going to think it's embarrassing. They're going to be like, okay, it just helps me and my mind know uh, that we're on time or not. You're right. I, I agree, but I, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so we show up and then. We show up I, an hour later, actually. Yeah, it was like an hour later. And, but it wasn't like intentional because even they didn't know that the flights had moved. So yeah, yeah. our brain was planned and programmed to leave till like nine so anyways we find out that we're leaving from cbx if you don't know what cbx is it's it's in tj right so you literally have to go all the way to san diego it's a far spot uh drive it's like two hours away so we're like fuck now we have to drive all the way over there right so i was like all right bet i'll drive i'll take everyone like my car has a lot of space in the back so we pop like literally get to the place to their house and then they're like um basically since it's december cbx is like super packed like everything for the holidays everyone's traveling yeah. to visit their families in mexico or whatever yeah, country. everyone takes that airport because it's either cheaper and then they're one of the only people that have direct flights to certain places in mexico not everything does so a lot of people use cbx um so that shit's packed like parking is packed everything's packed it's a nightmare it's literally a shit show so everything was just crazy crowded so they're like yeah maybe we should probably uber but the problem so, with the ubering is that nobody is gonna take uh, a drive from where they are to TJ, which is a two hour drive. Like who in the right mind is going to do that? It's what one way, to, one way there. And then it's not like guarantee that they're going to get like a ride back to go yeah. to the original spot they were in. Yeah. They could just lose mm -hmm. like all that time and it could just all go to shit. So regardless, uh, we end up getting a freaking Uber. Thankfully, thankfully dude, we got so it lucky. It was a lift. I think not even an Uber is a lift. And so we get it. So then we start our drive, right? So we pack all our stuff and we're like rushing. We're like afraid we're not going to make it like this whole thing. We put our stuff in the car, in the lift, and we head the freak out. So this is kind of where the, I think where we started to get, it was like the beginning of the traveling that started to drain us. Exactly. Because I think that if we would have left from Ontario, which I don't think we could have, because I don't think they have direct flights to Mexico City. Or if we would have left from LAX, which I also, I think maybe LAX probably could have had direct flights. What's the other one down in Orange County? I don't know. All these fucking airports, right? But I know that Ontario and LAX are one of the only international ones. That's I didn't why. know that. Yeah. I, I don't think there's a lot of international. Ones. Whatever. So point being is, if it, we would have left from something that wasn't two hours away, maybe we wouldn't have been as tired. You agree? Hell yeah, bro. Yeah. That okay. that bro, it was a two hour drive. It felt like five hours. Right. I agree. I agree. So that but that's kind of the beginning of starting everything, right? So we get on that lift, we start heading out. Um, no Starbucks. That was nothing but that was so mad. <laughs> nothing but sadness. Like, so we're in the car, right? And then I think I'm just not used to being in the back anymore. So it's like all of us. And then um Ale, he went in the very third freaking row, which is like the tightest row ever, right? When whoever goes in the third row, like, geez, good luck to you. That shit is tight as fuck. Like, dude, yeah. why did he go in the back? I, I felt know, so bad. Me too, because it's like I could have gone in the back because I'm the little one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn. Regardless. Whatever, we take this freaking drive, two hours, nighttime stressing, like, it was just crazy. So we get over there. By the time we get there, I think it was like a two-hour, 40-minute or 30-minute drive because it was traffic because it was also freaking traffic hours. So we get out there. Um, we get all the bags off. We start getting out. We're, like, trying to run inside the airport because we're like, we're not going to make this fucking flight. To be honest with you, we're going to miss this bitch. So we start going inside, do our check-in. And because none of us are residents or none of us have our dual citizenship, we all have to do the immigration stuff. If you've traveled, you know exactly what the hell I'm talking about. It was my first time traveling like that through CBX From and CBX? doing all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was hectic, bro. Yeah. We would do that shit all the fucking time. And it's just annoying because you have to do all this immigration shit. And then you have to deal with the people who work at CBX, which are literally the worst people to deal with. Bro, any airport, like customer service is the worst customer service No, you but have. I think theirs is worse. You think so? They're Fuck like yeah. done with everybody, huh? Dude, I think they, you know what's my issue? I'm going to move on to something real quick before I say Ramble. Anything. I think that Hispanic people are the meanest to Hispanic people. You think so? Oh, I know so. And I'm saying this because tell me when you go into a freaking super or Cardenas or a superior or whatever, right? The workers are always pieces of shit and they treat other people. Like, the señoras like pieces of shit. And I think it's because these people think that they're above other people. 
I think that's a big, a big thing in the Hispanic culture, and I think they see other people down. Like what? Like if you're oh shit, sorry. Like if you're shopping there, or like whatever, like you're lower than them because they're working there. You see what, what I'm saying? And I, I feel like this. in the white like you know world, it's no, it's like you're working here, you're working for me. Like I'm oh, better I get than you. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Do you agree? Isn't agree, it like yeah. flipped in the Hispanic? It's fucked up, but it truly is this way. Like you go to a Sephora and they're like, anything else you need? Anything else? Anything else? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But they'll never do that. At, at a, like a grocery store. Like at where there's mainly Hispanic based people. Mm-hmm. Fucking never. Tell me when you would see that. Anyway, so I think that's the same thing for airport. You guys have to agree with me right now. Let me know if you have traveled through CBX or any airport for that matter in like Mexico. Don't you think that they treat people like shit and it be your own people? Like, I think they just see you lower than them. I don't know. I think it's that because even when we were over there, dude, like it, there was just so many things that happened where people literally look at you like you're a, like you're a dumb bitch, like kneel to me. And also the story that they were telling us, they told us basically this story about this guy that um, talk to them in a rude way and she talked back in a rude way because you know don't disrespect people and don't get that expect that same energy back so and he held their passport yeah. cards and everything so they couldn't travel and they had to pay yeah. their way to get past him he was like you gotta pay me if not i'm not giving you your stuff back that is like first of all illegal as fuck but nobody cares because it's over there and it's like again it's this like su- superiority what is it yeah, what complex like it's, it's like the the triangle what is it called yeah that shit's ugly so whatever i think that people over here in lax everyone always has a fucking stick up their ass but over there <laughs> it is worse <laughs> it is so bad over there they got to Palo in the nagas yeah so bad <laughs> so whatever we get there everybody's just like rude like screaming and just bad and bad. that doesn't help coming from a two and a half hour drive bro yeah you're already pissed right you're pissed and then you get there and then the airport people treat you like fucking shit like it's just bad so whatever we're going through the airport and then we're also hungry okay keep this in mind we're starving because we didn't eat because everything was like moved right we get in we start going through security we do everything lines on lines on lines and and just so much yeah just bad anyways we get through the airport we get to, like, the food section. Um, Jacob goes to, like, Johnny Rockets, and I'm just looking forward to my fucking shake, but they don't have shake because it's freaking airport food, and they don't have shit at the fucking airport. <laughs> like, the restaurant... Dude, literally, tell me why. Actually, we, I should say this to the end, but we went to this restaurant that legit was a wing place, but they didn't even have wings. Like, what the, <laughs> what the actual hell? Like, you're already having a badass day, right? And then you get to these places, and you're like... Oh, it says gosh. wing. The name's wings, <gasps> and it, they don't have wings there. <laughs> like, man's literally came and said... We don't got wings. We don't got burgers. We don't got. Um, what did he say he had? He just had like fries and and. Um, they they yeah they had the fries. fries. They had fries. The asada fries. I don't know. They had like three menu, three things that, on the menu. That's it. Just that shit makes your day even worse. But we'll get to that. So whatever, we go through it. Jacob doesn't get my milkshake that I'm literally fucking craving. We get literally waited in like a twenty minute line for Domino's, right? And then when I get to the front, the guy screams. He goes. We're not making pizzas anymore. If you want to get one, we have the personal size. Pepperoni and Hawaiian only. Dude, not one. You could have just slapped the fuck out of me and I would have been happier. Like, I just waited in this 20-minute fucking line, right, with people that are sick, okay? Do you remember that guy? the people right behind us were coughing right in our faces. Like, they're like... (coughs) And you can hear their nasty ass breath and smell that shit. Like you bro. could feel it in your neck. For real, you're, <gasps> getting, you're getting bumps and pimples and shit. Dude, it was it so, was so bad. nasty, bro. Everyone is sick. I like if re- you're sick, travel with the mask at least. Exactly. If you're gonna travel. Exactly, dude. I was like, why didn't I bring a mask? Why did I not bring a fucking mask right now? I regret in my thank, life decision. Thank God we didn't get sick either, though. Dude, Dude, there are so many sick people over there at the airport. Everybody is sick. And I'm not saying it's COVID, but I don't care what type of sickness it is. Don't give it to me. Like, dude, that being sick sucks. Anyways, everybody's fucking sick, coughing, boogers and whatever. Legit, like coughing so bad, cough attacks, everything. Everybody's sick. So we're in this line, right, with a bunch of sick people. And then we get to the front and fuck you, no pizza. And I'm like, fuck. So I just get a little mini pizza that's Hawaiian, <laughs> but I didn't want Hawaiian. I wanted jalapenos. So Dude, whatever. Wait, wait, wait. Why do you eat jalapeno pizza, but you take the jalapenos off? It's for the flavor. I don't want to hear it. It's for the flavor. You guys get me right. Like I swear, it's just the flavor. I'm gonna get you a Hawaiian me. pizza, and I'm gonna think I'm in Hawaii. You know, that's it's how it the works. flavor. I don't know how to explain. Like I get Hawaiian pizza, but I take off the pineapple. But I like the sweet juice that it leaves. You know. You're gonna put avocados in your pizza and think you're in Mexico or what? What do you mean? Because aguacates de Mexico. But no, that's not what I said. I said I take them off. Oh yeah, I guess so. 
Yeah, I just do it for the flavor. So regardless, back to my story. So you, Jacob, can you want to take it on from here? So she gets her Hawaiian pizza, mad as hell, <laughs> and I'm still in the line waiting for, dude. The line I was in for Johnny Rockets was the longest line ever. No, no, the shortest line ever. Hers was so long. Her food came out like ten minutes before mine. Oh, also, <laughs> when they ordered, when they or, uh, took order for the burgers, they duplicated the orders in front of me, like five people ahead of me, yeah. and they replicated them. So when my order came out, it wasn't even my order. They had to give like orders that were previous people's orders and give it to us. Add whatever we added on the on the. Okay, let thing. me say it through. Let me say it so they can envision what happened. Go. So we go up, we pull up to Johnny Rockets, and I'm like, "Why the hell don't you have your food yet? You ordered literally like 20 minutes ago. I was literally at the end of the line. You were at the front of the line. Why isn't your food here?" So I'm like, "What the heck's going on?" So I'm like, "Go ask." So he goes up and he goes, "Oh, is this my this is my number? Like, is my food ready?" And the lady's like, "No, it's not ready yet." So I was like, "What the hell? Like, this shit's weird." So we get back and I start listening, right? And these people speak Spanish, so I know what the hell you're saying. So I'm listening, and then the one of the cooks, he's like. He tells the girl, like, oh, did you hit? I think she had to hit a button to reset whatever the fuck was going on, right? And then the girl goes, oh, no, I didn't. And then the cook just goes, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Something's wrong here, right? And I knew it because of this time. So then she goes, no, mames. And the guy goes, no, no, mames, too. So he's pissed. And I'm like, what is going on here, right? So I'm trying to listen and figure out what's going on. So then the manager comes in at this time. And then the cook goes, you need to go tell the people that are waiting for the food what their food is or bring the receipt so I can start making it for them because these people are waiting and there's no food for them. That's all I needed to hear. My pizza's getting fucking cold. His food's nowhere near done. There's like the five burgers on the table waiting with nobody getting them. There's like a long ass line for Johnny Rockets now. The, the cook is fighting with the cashier. There's one cashier that's just looking at them fight. The people are pissed in line. <laughs> the people that are with us to get their food are pissed because they ordered like half an hour ago. A mess, a legit mess. So Jacob, the cook comes out and he goes, sorry, we had like a error in our system. Um, can you guys bring your receipts, you know, so we can remake your stuff. And then Jacob just stands there, right? While people are going to take the receipt, like, bro, hurry up, go put your receipts. So I didn't understand food. them. So I'm like, Jake, go take your receipt. So he takes it and then the guy kind of checked it and they already had pre-made fries. So he just dumps the fries and then he just built your burger real quick and we left. Two minutes out, we're done. So we leave, right? And then now we got to go find... Um, the table that our friends were sitting at, because our friends went to go eat at this restaurant. What was the name of it? VIPs or VIPs. VIPs or, yeah, VIPs, whatever. So they're sitting at this restaurant inside of the airport. So then we go inside, right? And then, okay, so the freaking thing is closed because you're not allowed to go inside of the restaurant unless you, like, get a table, sit down, and then eat. You can't just grab your food and go, like, leech off of the tables, you know? So then that shit's closed. The lady comes, and I was like, I think we, like, try to hide our food, and we're like, oh, we got a table already. Um, can we just go inside? And then she's like, Okay, whatever. Like, they were so busy that they didn't really care. So just open that shit, go inside. We sit down. <coughs> <laughs> Tell me what... <laughs> as we're talking about sick people... Sorry, I choked. I'm talking so fast because I don't want this story to get boring. Go, okay. go, go. So, you literally kissed me. When's the last time I kissed you? So, anyways, Nat doesn't we love sit me. Down. She doesn't kiss me anymore. <laughs> Jake, <laughs> we sit down, and our friends legit don't even have drinks yet. Like, I'm not even exaggerating you. And they don't this, even have drinks. This whole Domino's and Johnny Rockets process took at least 45, 50 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they went to go uh, get seated at the, ta uh, the table at VIPs, VIPs, whatever you call it. Yeah. They were, like, one of the first people to They sit barely down. had their menus, too. Legit, no drinks, hadn't ordered, no server in sight, right? And then we already have our food. So when you sit, we sit down, and I was like, fuck, I don't know if I should eat or not. But I ate because I was hungry as fuck. So we started eating. And then Jake started eating his food. Um, we shared, we had a lot of fries, so we shared with them yeah. while they were starving too. Yeah, we had like, I had extra slices of pizza with my little personal one, so we just like gave it to them and then they got their drinks and then their food took a minute to come in and then the food came and I think they didn't like it. Did they like it or did they not Dude, like it? Dude, the picture showed like a big old, what's it called, a baguette? A baguette like this big and it yeah. came out like this big. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was all, everything was just, like the signs were like, Go home, go home, go home, go home. <laughs> but we just kept pushing it. So that's why we got in the situations we got into. So anyways, they eat. And then, okay, so during this whole time, by the way, I'm starting to get really bad chills in my whole body. And I cannot explain to you. So I'm a type of person that I'll get cold fast. Like, I need the seat warmer every single time I get in my car. I don't care if it's 200 degrees outside. I need that seat warmer on because my ass gets cold. So, or I need the freaking um, heater for my toes, okay? Because those bitches go numb quick. <laughs> so, Jake knows whenever he starts the car, seat warmer and the thing for my feet. And then he'll put his AC on and then good. There's no, you know, there's no arguing. We got a good system now. 
So I get cold so fast, dude. But tell me why dumbass Nat forgot her fucking sweater. And a blanket. Her fucking sweater. Tell me, I had this little um, waffle cropped little ass sweater from Maritzia that was, I took. It was to look pretty, not to be warm in either. Yeah. To the airport. Keep that in mind. <laughs> and ripped jeans. No fuzzy socks. Dude. The worst, but I forgot because I was so busy trying to rush these dogs to their daycare for us to go to the their house that I forgot. Well, and you know, your boy Jake DeCurly came prepared. I was no, warm, not, not there, comfy. not there yet, not oh, there sorry, yet. Sorry. We're not there yet. So when I found out that I forgot my stuff, I was like, "Damn, we're in, we're in, we're in a pickle here." So I start looking. You know how airports usually have like the neck pillows, the blankets, the hoodies, <laughs> the merch. You know they have like their little merch of their airport, and then you could buy the hoodies. Nothing. Not one thing. Like, legit zero. They were closed. Oh, my gosh. And then the stores that were open were like, oh, yeah. They had, like, T-shirts, but that was it. And they don't have blankets. They don't have nothing. They don't have, like, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So, yeah. this We're on for a good trip here. So, during this whole time that we're sitting down eating, that we're ordering freaking Domino's, Johnny Rockets, whatever, I'm getting the chills. I'm cold. I'm angry. I'm pissed. It was just too much going on. Anyways, we get to the food, and that's where... I was, you know... Jake too curly in the cut, comfy and everything. Yeah, you had a he had a hoodie like a like a nice Nike. I hoodie. brought a Nike hoodie. I was warm. I, I was really like dressed, not to impress what it's called, dressed for like the, the whatever it was. Like I was airport ready, yeah, warm. Now I was freezing, crying. <laughs> are, wait, are we in like when we got in the airport already in the car, um into the the plane? No, we're in Vips. Oh, we're in Vips. That's oh, you gave and it then to she, me. okay, so she's like cold and she's like like staring at me. And I'm like. Why are you eyeing my, my sweater, bro? So I didn't like, want to say anything. I, and underneath the sweater, what did I have? A, a t-shirt? A t-shirt. I had a t-shirt. And she's like, she felt bad when I gave her my sweatshirt because she was like, are you cold, babe? Are you cold, babe? She asked me like a, the entire time we were going I know, on a flight dude, I and everything. I felt so bad. Because if you would have said you were cold, I would have gave it to you. But I'm a W boyfriend, so I gave her my sweater. And she kept asking if I'm cold. Even though I was cold, I like being cold. I was like, nah, I'm warm. I'm so hot. It's really hot outside. <laughs> <laughs> it was like negative 100 degrees. It was the coldest day, I think, of the week. It was legit. Like, okay, you know when they put that tunnel? You know the tunnel they build to, like, connect the plane to the, like, waiting area? When you got into that tunnel, the walls were literally fogged. Like, they fogged up because of how cold it was outside. Like, imagine 30 fucking degrees. Like, it was freezing. So, imagine how the plane was. Put that into perspective. Mm -hmm. And Jacob gave me his sweater. Call me Jacob. What's his name? Jacob Sartorius because I'll give you my sweatshirt. (laughs) (laughs) Literally gave me your sweater. And I think, like, I was just so cold even when he gave me that sweater that, okay, so fast forward, get into the plane, sit down to our seats, and we had exit seats. So exit seats are freaking dope. Dude, no, because, they're not. Listen, listen, listen. Hold up, I'll get there. Sorry, sorry. Exit seats are dope because you have extra leg room, right? Like, you have, like, so much leg room. But let me tell you everything that sucks about exit seats right because back in the day i used to always get exit seats because i was like damn these have like leg room for free like dope i'm gonna and they're always empty so i was like bet well i'm telling you why they're always empty (laughs) never get an exit seat i'll tell you why the first thing is you cannot take anything with you not a purse not a blanket not not nothing okay not whatever you want to take with you no they'll take it from you you cannot have anything because you're basically in the way of the exit Mm -hmm. It's like if something were to happen, your blanket's going to get in the way, so you got to get rid of it. So you can't have anything, which was red flag number one. And that lady was pissed to sell too. Oh, my gosh. The whole trip, we were just, like, arguing with people. Jen, that lady, because she was like, I need your bag. And I was like, my bag? She's like, yeah, I need your bag. And she was already getting mad. And I was like, hold the fuck up. We needed our charger for our bag. She didn't even give us time to get our charger. She didn't. Nothing. She was just like, give me your bag. And I was like, oh, my God, this lady's pissing me off. So I go into the seat, right, so I could take my stuff out. And she's like... I need your bag because this is an exit seat. Like, if you would have said that at the beginning, we wouldn't have gotten here. It's just people are just so mad. And so I'm like, okay, I need to get, like, my charger or whatever. Uh, we didn't end up getting the fucking charger because this lady was so pissed. And I guess Our phones were about to die, too, bro. Yeah, it was. Oh, yeah, our phones were, like, on 10% each. Just bad. So I'm like, okay, so I just gave her the bag, right? And she puts my fucking bag on there and chucks the thing. You know what I'm talking about where you freak she, the- she pulls it, chucks it over, closes it right there. Like, no fucks given. <laughs> and my bag isn't the bag that has a zipper on top. So my bag is like an open, just like a normal open bag. And it's like the little one. So if you move it, everything's going to fall out. I had our passports in there, my ID, all of my stuff. And this lady grabbed it, legit put it like this, and then just Bam, chucked it. And I was like, 
And I told Jake, I was like, can you open that thing again? Because she just chucked it. My bag flipped. I have our passports in there. I need to close it, right? She heard me. She knew what I was saying, right? She spoke English. And she was like, no, it didn't. And she pulled it down, right? Jake takes it out. I grab my bag. I close the zipper. Because my bag has like a little thingy where it has a little zipper. So I put our passports in there and then I shut it. And then the rest of the stuff, I was like, whatever. If that drops, it drops. And then I put it, she put it back up there and then chucked it again. <laughs> like, why the fuck? Like, hey, I get it. You got to put a little pressure to close it. But she chucked it like <laughs> mad, like so mad. I was like, oh my gosh, it only got worse, guys. It only got worse. You put your backpack up, right, too? Yeah, she made me put my backpack up first. That's where the, the, everything was in. Bro. The chargers and yeah. everything. So we sit down, right? This lady's just mad as fuck. We get on the plane and then... I start dying immediately, immediately. Like, I, you know how, how it gets cold inside the, what's it called? Inside the airplanes. Cause they need to like to let everything like, what's it called? The air pressure. So they have AC in there blasting. That was legit freezing. blasting. Why the fuck is the AC always blasting in the airplane? What's the science for me? It feels good. I, I'm not a complainer. Oh so now was crying the entire time, the entire flight. She's and like, I was trying to sleep the entire flight. It was a, how long was the original flight? Uh, three hours. So for the first th three hours, no, for the first two hours, for the first two hours, I was trying to fly uh, like, sleep and every 20 minutes i i love you for this but every 20 minutes babe are you cold are you cold babe babe it's okay are you cold and i told her no a million times before this dude but, but I why would did you touch keep it asking because i would touch you when you were cold but it felt good no but like i had that in my head like i took his sweater dude like i fucking took his sweater so i gave him my little waffle sweater for him to put on here like right here and i would like tuck it in between him like so he would put it oh, on. Oh, yeah. She would tuck me in. That felt so fire. And I would tuck it in, like, his shoulders right here. So it would, he would be covered be like with this. this little shit sweater that didn't do shit. But it, I, would it worked. To, I would try to tuck it in. But I was just so, like, fuck. Like, I felt so bad. And then the air was going in through, like, the creases, the, the holes of my freaking <laughs> jeans. And I was shoving my hands in between the holes of my jeans to, like, not let any air go in. And I was like... <sighs> But at this point, so I had fell asleep, right? I fell asleep when we first went into the plane. Like, we went in. The plane didn't even take off, and I had fell asleep because that's how tired we were, right? And so at this point, what is it? Is it, like, 1 a.m.? Yeah, it's 1 a.m. Yeah, at this point, it's 1 because our flight was at 11. 11 so then, our yeah, it's, like, 1 a.m., something like that. And so I fell asleep, and I wake up to legit my body is stone. Like, actually stone. And then I touch him. And then he's stoned too. So I'm like, oh, fuck. So I could never get my body temperature back to where it was supposed to be. So the whole flight, I was just like. But there was nobody next to me on the right side. So it was an empty seat. So I went onto the that seat a little bit. And I put my legs over the holes of her jeans. And it warmed her up a little bit, right? Oh, yeah. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jake turned around and then just put his feet on me. And it kept more warmth, you guys. I cannot explain to you the coldness I had. My throat was hurting. It was Horrid. Anyways, I'm more worried that this man is going to freeze on me because I took his sweater, right? The <laughs> guilt. The fucking guilt was killing me so bad. So I was like, dang, like, we're in a pickle here. So then, um, I don't know what happens, but next thing I know, let me let me tell you guys what I heard. <clears throat> um, I'm going to translate in English. We have just arrived to the airport of Acapulco. I repeat, we have just arrived to the airport of Acapulco. Um... We were going to Mexico City, babe. So why the fuck are we in Acapulco? Oh, I know what he said before that. What did he say? He said the weather conditions in, in Mexico City are not... No, 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 no. He did not say that. He did not say that. Yeah, he did. No, that, no, that was he before. Didn't. Yeah, you... that's what I'm trying to say, though. Like, I didn't hear that. I only heard Acapulco. And I'm like, hold the fuck up. Jake, what did this man just... And I looked down, and it we're literally in Acapulco. So I'm like, Jake, what is going on? And he goes, oh, yeah. The weather conditions in Mexico City was too foggy, too whatever, too cold. I don't know what it was. And they had to, like, have, like, a re revision. They ended up landing in Acapulco. Whatever but you that heard is. that, right? Yeah, I heard it. Yeah. He translated it in English after, so. No, but when did he say that? He said that about, like, 50 minutes after. I mean, 50 minutes before. Before. And you were awake? Mm hmm Yeah, so Jake had heard him say that. I didn't hear, so I just wake up freaking out because I thought we got on the wrong plane. Because we were supposed to be in Mexico City, and then we're in Acapulco. And I was like, this shit's weird. And so Jake was like, oh, yeah. He, like, I looked outside and you couldn't see anything. I was like, fuck. But I was too sleepy to care and I was, like, half dead to care. So I was too cold. Um, and then what did the guy say? Oh, he was like, we're going to wait here till Mexico City or Mexico tells us when it's okay to fly again. So I'm like, okay, 15 minutes, cool. We'll be right on our, you know, on our way and we'll head out to no. Mexico City. Homie tells us we're going to be here for around two to three hours. <laughs> I didn't hear that. 
He said that, and I was you like, were awake? "Yeah, I was yeah. awake." He's like, "We're gonna be here for like two to three hours," and I looked around, and everyone was like getting mad. Everyone was so frustrated, and like it wasn't just me. So I was like, "All right, all right." Yeah, I didn't hear any of that, so I fell back asleep. And the next thing I know, we are in Mexico City. But Jake, I was later, awake this entire flight, yeah. bro. Yeah, I remember Jacob when I woke up. I was like, "Oh, are we here?" And he was like. Yeah, and I was like, how long How long were we in Acapulco for? And he's like, two hours. Hold the hell. So you were freezing for two hours? I wasn't freezing. I wouldn't say freezing. I was just Dude, cold. That shit's fucking crazy. So yeah, anyways, our first flight got... Delayed two, uh, two three hours. Well, no, you have to keep in mind... Okay, so let me explain how this works and why so much time gets added. When you go somewhere, let's say, for example, we were going to Mexico City, right? Okay, so because Mexico City didn't work, now we have to fly the extra time that it is to go to Acapulco. Jacob, I don't know what that time is, but, I mean, it must have been like 40 to 50 minutes, right? So now you have to draw, literally fly one hour out of your way, stay there for two, three, and then fly another hour back. So how many did that just add? Two, three, like four hours. Plus the time difference is there. It's like two hours ahead of our time. Yeah, but that doesn't actually add time. No, 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 I'm not saying. Just, it, so it made it later. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so whatever time, so if it was three hours, we did like a seven-hour flight, literally se- in seven. In the plane, yeah. not not like a, like, in total, it was just in the plane seven hours. Yeah, that's not adding the two hours to San Diego. That's not adding. The, the luggage. Yeah, the two hours. After picking our luggage up, <laughs> oh my, bro, don't get that's me started on that. One. That's oh. another story. Okay, so yeah, we're so many hours in, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So we're 11 hours in, right? The two from... Two from San Diego. Oh, that's not even counting the time from here to... Okay, so we are 12 hours in. One hour getting to Ellie's daycare in their house. Two hours getting to San Diego. Two hours at the airport Six eating. Six hours in the plane. Seven it was hours seven hours. Seven hours in the plane. And now I'm about to add another fucking like three hours. So we get off the fucking plane, right? Everybody's pissed. I'm cold. I'm literally seeing stars. That's how cold I am. My body's shivering. I don't know what to do. My lips are like blue, legit. So we're getting off the plane, right? I'm like, all right. Every by the way, it's a shit show because since Mexico City was the way it was, yeah, we're not the only people going to Mexico City. There's like a bunch of other planes, right? So for everybody got pe- stopped in Acapulco. No, not well. They sent four if other you're going people to, to City. where did they send the other people oh, to? I think Guanaja- Guanajuato. Yeah, they sent other people to other. I don't know where. Places yeah, too, I think it was Guanajuato. Yeah, so they sent the people out to different places. So there was four planes with us in Acapulco, and then there was four or five in Guanajuato, and I don't know where the other ones were at. Regardless, shit ton of planes. We all land at the same time. <laughs> at the same fucking time. If you like travel, you know that's the worst thing because they only have like three luggage carriers in the luggage belts. Yeah. <sighs> three stations for f- what? Seven planes? Yeah, that's a nightmare. <laughs> like legit a nightmare. So you got, you know, poor people that were like carrying the luggage, but at the same time, not really because those fuckers literally almost broke my freaking suitcase. So. People are, like, trying to hurry, right? So they're, like, chucking your checked bags everywhere, cracking shit, breaking stuff. Like, just so, so bad. Because there's this demand for the people that are inside. But, yeah, it was just so bad. And then there was this guy that got so mad because the lady accidentally bumped him, remember? Yeah, so we'll get into that. Let's tell the story as the storyline. You want to continue from there? No, no, no. I like like hearing you. I like hearing you. I'll jump in when I know. Okay, okay. So, (laughs) anyways, we get off of the plane, shivering, blue freaking lips, just everybody's mad. Everyone's like delayed by like four or five hours at this point. So, everyone's pissed. We get down to the little belts of the luggage stuff. By the way, in this time, you know, I have to pass all the stores. No blankets, no hoodies, no nothing, right? Just (laughs) food. So, I'm I'm pissed. We get down to the little belt, and it literally, it was ants. Like a literal ant house. The belt was, started from like right here and ended all the way to like another like 30, 40 feet. Yeah. People were lined up all along it. All along it. And then like all behind it. It was ants. I don't know how else to explain it. You know when you like step on a like the ant house and all, all the ants are like Psh, like that. That's how it was, dude. It was like packed. And everybody's pissed. So um, it's funny because I was actually telling our friends, I was like, oh, yeah, last time we went to like Aruba or I don't know where we had gone. We waited like an hour for like luggage. It was a nightmare. And they were like, no way. That would suck. Little did we know. And it happened. <laughs> Little did we fucking know. So we're standing there, dude. It's like 20 minutes. And we're like, what the hell? And you don't see nobody. 
At around the 40-minute mark, we start to get suitcases. But we don't even know whose suitcases they are because you have to keep in mind there's only, like, four belts of, or I think it was three, right? Of yeah, the, of the convention belts. Yeah, yeah, the little freaking, that shit. And there is, like, eight planes that just landed. There, so there's not, you know, usually there's, like, the little screens that say where the luggage is from. No, that shit was off. Like, nothing was on. Everybody was so overworked, overwhelmed. No one had time for that. So they're just throwing luggage into these belts, and we don't know which one ours is in. Like, we're just standing there like idiots. So, you know, they're throwing the luggage in. I'm seeing these fuckers, like, break stuff, throwing stuff. It was so bad, dude. So we're waiting. Like, a literal hour goes by, I think. Yeah, it was like an hour. We were waiting there for the longest. For the longest. People are so mad, dude. The poor worker inside was trying to do his job, getting the, the luggages off the convention belt and putting them in front. I see why people were mad about that, though. But still, he's just doing his job. And some guy next to us was like, why are you doing that? Why are you putting them off? We're waiting over here in the line. But if he doesn't do that, then it's going to get too packed. I agree. That's why I'm, I'm look, here's the thing. I see why people are getting mad, but it's also, dude, the guy was so nice and he was only he doing was his so job. He was so nice. He was, he had like the best day in his life. And then those, he came. ruined it, dude. He literally like quit his job. So he, what happened? He was, stopped taking all the luggage off and he just standing right there. He was just like, yeah, because people kept telling him stuff. Yeah. That's so rude. Of because people, the thing, you know how the little belt keeps going around, right? It just keeps going around and around and around. <laughs> so for okay. the people that are waiting on the other side, they don't get to see anything. Everything's in the front where all the ants are piled up. Yeah, because no, the belt will never make it over there with the <laughs> luggage because this guy is camping right here, taking them out. Camping? Right? Shut he is. Up. He's camping it right here. So he, oh, he's taking them out. So the people over here are like waiting for luggage and the belt's coming empty, right? This guy's just pulling them out right here because that's his job because if he doesn't pull them out, People don't grab them, so then the belt gets too full, and the people on the other side are, aren't able to add more bags. See what I'm trying to say here? So he's doing that, and then the guys are mad. This guy was like, you're just making it worse. Like, people can't get them over there, and he's just pissed, right? And then he goes, I'm just doing my job, sir, right? And then after, like, the third person that told him something, he just left that shit. He mm -hmm. said, fuck everybody. He went to the back. Anyways, so we're waiting, and then this lady comes with a little cart, right? You know what those, those luggage carts where you're able to add your luggage, and it's, like, pretty big? So she stubs this guy in the ankle, barely, right? Barely. I didn't even see her hit him that much. It was a, it was, a, it wasn't him. It was the, the heel of his shoe that she, that she hits. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. And homie gets, he goes, "What does he say? I deserve an apology." He goes, "You're not gonna apologize." And she looks at him and she's like, "I'm sorry." Like whispers it. I'm sorry. Can you move real quick? Go that way. People in this house live so rent free. Are you seeing this right now? Do you guys see? Are we seeing the same thing here? Rent free. What are you doing on the couch, silly? <laughs> Legit rent free. Where's Thea? Thea? Thea's downstairs, I think. Where are you, my love? Come here. <laughs> Y'all, these people in this house live oh, rent free. Hi, baby. Including Natalie Quibos. Go on the couch. I got her like that. Oh, my gosh. Okay, anyways, back to the story. Sorry, Ellie just looked so cute on there. Okay, so, um, yeah, he hits the freaking ankle, and this guy's like, you're not going to apologize? What did he say? You're not going to apologize? You're, you're supposed to apologize Oh, yeah. Um, no, he said, you're not going to apologize to me? And then the girl goes like, oh, sorry. And then he goes, <sighs> like, just snagging And he had, like, her. two of his other friends with him. He's trying to be so cool. Yeah, and he looked exactly like the type of guy that would do that. Like, like, I don't even know how to explain it without being rude. Mm -hmm. He looked like he was like those people that are all up on Bad Bunny's nuts. And they don't even listen to him. He had like these little, like little. Slick like slick back. Yeah, all, yeah, yeah. All gel, like 90% gel, 10% hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. And his homie with the glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah. They had glasses, the little round ones, you know, like cool as fuck, like. You know, I mean, not really. Lady cool, Gaga like vibes. Trying to, trying to be cool, like pretty boy. <laughs> wearing these like shoes that I'm sure he thought were the coolest, finest piece of art. Tight ass shirt, 100% cotton, but he washed it before he wore it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he was wearing. Wearing this backpack that was like literally touching his neck, like <laughs> tight up. And like, you know, talking with his bros. Like he's all cool. Like school boy, like these shorts. Like they looked like little Lululemon shorts, right? Yeah, they were Lululemon shorts. And they were shorts. so tight on him. And so he's wearing this outfit, right? As if it's not two degrees outside. And literally acting so cool, being mean to this girl. And this girl was literally like a, like a senora. Not really a senora. She was like maybe like, like a mom, though. Yeah, like she was just trying to get the luggage. And she was by herself, dude. Like she was trying to get all this stuff. And he was just like 
being so mean to her. And so I was like, oh, no way. He just, you didn't even notice what had happened, huh? Until no, after we uh, told uh, you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no way. And then um, the lady ended up, ends up leaving. Oh, when she, she turns around to leave. And then um, he looks at her and then he He's goes. He's like, you're supposed to apologize to, when you do something to someone. Yeah, something like that. It was so weird. Like, weird best fuck guy. Like, like he felt like he was so above her or something like he that. He was just like laughing with his homies like. Like, and, and then she's <laughs> like, how? Like, stupid, like, 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 look at this girl, like, stupid fucking dumb bitch. Like, <laughs> just so, so ugly, dude. So, like, I was just about to tell them, like, do you want me to buy you new shoes? Like, it was so fucking weird. They like, were converse. Dude, they were converse. literally, like, there was no reason to disrespect somebody over some fucking converse. And even if, like, she did hit you hard. And even if they were Balenciaga. Dude, you don't treat people like that. Mm -hmm. It was just so mean. Again, I think he just sees her as lower than him. And it's just with this whole situation about Hispanics treating Hispanics this way. It would, literally, it all comes back to that. Yeah. So, anyways, hours fucking later. They throw our bags on the belt, and I'm talking they throw their bags, not my bag. So their bags are gone, and then we're just waiting on mine, and literally mine doesn't come till another, like, 20 minutes later, and, <laughs> like, you do not want to be that person. You want to make sure you get your bag first because if the group is waiting on you, that shit's embarrassing. And our, all of our friends didn't even have, like, the check luggage. They had their carry-ons. Yeah, so the everyone, The only reason why we were waiting is because of us. Mm -hmm. mm. So they put my bag up, and legit... You know what happens? So they throw my bag, throw it, and they didn't even throw it right. So then the bag gets stuck from when it comes from the outside to the inside, right? There's like that little like flappy thing, then it just goes through like that. Okay, so it gets stuck. My bag spins. And, and it then falls it spins. over. Bam! It goes to the inside. So then my bag, my stuff just broke for like the 20th time. Falls in, gets stuck. So my bag is now preventing other bags from coming out and it's half on the ground and it's heavy as hell. It was an overweight bag and it was like half off and it's just stuck and nobody can do shit about it because it's so heavy. So now we go get the homie that quit his job earlier. Remember? <laughs> so we're like, hey, my bag got stuck. So then this guy, but by this time, Ivan had already like jumped the thing. He to jumped try the belt and he went to go get the thing. Yeah, but then the guy that quit his job obviously takes his job so seriously. So he jumped over it and he goes, no, no, no. Like stand over there. Like, you know, like this Superhero. isn't safe. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the world. So like, <laughs> he grabs the bag, gives it to me. And he's like, thank you so much. Like have a good day. Like he just looked like he was new. Yeah. Right. Like, he was new at his job, trying to do everything perfect, and he got his feelings hurt. I think that's what it was, which, dude, I love people like him. His energy was good. Yeah. So, we get our bags, and we're heading out, right? So, then we have to try to find a taxi. Um, so, we get to a booth to rent a taxi, and... But the thing is, we have to get a taxi for six people, six mm -hmm. of us, with luggage. Yeah, if you don't know, basically, that means you need a Tahoe or a Suburban, and that's it, because any other SUV Or a Sprinter not. van. With the Sprinter van. Those big old vans you travel in, like, across the country. Yeah, you need that. So, we have, you know, huge luggage. So, we're not going to fit in your average six-person car. So, then we go. Oh, another thing is you don't want to get a random-ass taxi off of the fucking street because you never know when you're going to get robbed. For real, they're sus. So, you want to get a taxi from, like, the taxi providers inside of the airport. See what I'm trying to say? Like, in the inside. So, we go. And then the first people, and they're like, 30 minutes. Uh, nobody in this world is waiting 30 minutes for a taxi because we have just spent the last, like, 12, 13 hours traveling, and we're so annoyed, and I'm freezing. I feel like I'm about to just collapse. Like, that is, the chills were so bad. I, I've never felt that way before. So we're like, all right, no, we got to look for another taxi person. So we go to another booth, and they're like, oh, yeah, we got one, like, coming, like, right now. Bet, dude, you could have charged me. $2,000 and I would have paid him because that's how cold I was. I wanted to go to the Airbnb to turn the heater on and be happy for life, right? So I'm like, fuck, we got to get it now. So she's like, yeah, we have one. Sold. Get it now. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. So we get it, whatever. <laughs> we start walking outside, right? And then we're like kind of lost trying to find the taxi person. Whatever. We end up seeing this like nice ass Tahoe pull up. And that was our ride. Yeah. So. Start putting the stuff in, get in the car, then we start driving, and then obviously we get fucked with about a 50-minute drive to the freaking Airbnb because Mexico City is nothing but traffic. It's like literally L.A. So it was literally, I think, like 15 miles away from the airport, but we did an hour to get there. It was so much traffic, dude. Nothing but people honking, people pissed, like... Cutting I, you off, bro. Mexico drivers are like on some other stuff because that's crazy skills you have to have to drive into Mexico, bro. Mm -hmm. So when we're on the when we're driving back to the Airbnb, 
from the airport, like 30, 40 minutes in the car, in the car, he gets a call and he, I don't I don't understand what he's saying, but that's like translate to me. He's like, oh, he wasn't supposed to take off. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> yeah. So the girl calls him from the booth and she's like, oh, um, I, like basically he got the wrong people. So there was someone in front of us. So the person that was supposed to take us was still on the way. And then the person that we got into the car was somebody else's taxi. So we, we just, stole someone's ride. We just jacked someone's <laughs> ride, whatever. Hey, they're probably having a more shitty day than us. Yeah, because someone took his fucking ride. Yeah, I'd be <laughs> mad as fuck too. So I don't care. I was so happy. We were in that taxi. We were vibing. We were leaving. So um, like an hour later, you know, we make it to the freaking Airbnb. And I'm like, shit, like bet as fuck. I'm about to pull up into the Airbnb, turn on this freaking heater. She's about to get cozy. I'm about to, yeah, it's about to be the <laughs> best day. Dude, I'm trying to just bring my body back to life. I'm about to hop in a bath, you know. Open the door, which this door is like this heavy, like metal door. It doesn't have a handle. No handle, right? So, and then, okay, so we pull up and then there's this guy inside of the Airbnb. So the door's open and then there's this dude inside. With two dogs, with two dogs. Oh yeah, two dogs, two dogs. We're like, leave the dogs. So yeah, for real, leave them there. So it was like a pit bull and like another type of dog. Hella trained, by the way. And so we go inside, and I'm, like, sussed out because there's a guy inside of our Airbnb. So here in the U.S., when you pull up to an Airbnb, uh, nobody's there, right? You, there's, like, a lock or there's a pin pad. You put the thing. You go inside. You know, it's your stay. Who the hell? Oh. <laughs> the are girls are what fighting. What are you guys doing? <laughs> so we pull up, and there's this guy. So that shit was just weird, red flag, so weird. And then we walk in, and then he wasn't really talking to us. And then he goes, oh, yeah, here are the keys for your stay and um he shows us how to like lock the door which it's a whole manual on how to freaking close this door because like you gotta push it to lock it and then there's no like thing to lock it you just push it and it auto locks but then when you come back in you have, you have, have to have a key you have to have a key but then you have to pull it back dude it was this whole thing right and we're like okay that shit's weird but okay we'll go inside go inside automatic literally a refrigerator it it's was almost, so cold in there dude it was colder than outside you're a hey, Nat was looking for the heater in there. The, so, yeah. the AC, the heater. Yeah, so I'm like, okay, so you know, I'm trying to find this heater. So right before the guy leaves, I'm like, oh, where's the thermostat for the heater? And he goes, oh, we don't have a heater. <laughs> <laughs> in that moment, I was kind of like, yeah, I'm about to go back home. <laughs> because, dude, imagine the coldest you've ever been in your entire life, and someone basically says, you're in this ice box and there's no heater. Yeah, just basically fuck you. So I was like, yeah, this is it. I'm going to die tonight. So we started looking around the house, right? And so all of the rooms have like two twin beds. I think there was only like two rooms that had um, one king of like the king size, size beds. beds. But we didn't book this trip, so we are not entitled to those beds, right? But then all the other... Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I'm breaking your guys' ears. So inside of the other... Because I think it was like, what, five rooms or six rooms? It was a lot of freaking rooms. So those all the other rooms had two twin beds. And we're like, okay, we'll just get one of the two twin beds, and then we'll merge them, and then we'll have one big bed, right? Which <laughs> my plan, my plan was just like we both get on either one bed, or we just like go on a different bed. I didn't know to merge them. <laughs> Dude, you have ne- you never merged your beds I, as a little no, kid? I, I had to share the bed, like not merge them. Me and Edith always had two twin beds, and then during the winter we would merge them, and during what? the summer we would open them. But <laughs> our twin beds were not like these twin beds, which we'll get into when the night hits. So we're like, all right, babe, we'll get this room, whatever, like get inside, put our shit inside. And I'm dying. So I'm like, I'm going to go to Walmart right now and I'm going to buy a heater. I don't care how much it costs. I don't care how big it is. I'm going to load that bitch into any Uber and I'm going to bring it home. Like I am not freezing tonight or I'm going to book another Uber, another freaking Airbnb. And we're going to go somewhere with a heater because I cannot explain it. Like I swear it sounds so dramatic right now, but my body was giving out. Like I was cold to the touch. I couldn't stop shaking. Dude, like, my head was hurting because of how cold I was. It was, like, pain. Nothing but pain. So, from there, I was like, I need a coffee. I need something to, like, try to warm up my body. So, I'm like, I'm just going to walk these fucking streets and I'm going to find a coffee shop. So, I'm like, anybody want to go? So, Jake went and then our other two friends went with us. And we just start walking Mexico fucking city. I leave my camera. I leave my bag. I leave everything because if I get jacked, at least not my footage, you know? So I left everything (laughs) at home and we're walking to the coffee shop, right? We turn a corner and I don't know how the hell we found a coffee shop. It was right there next to Airbnb. It's perfect. Literally, thankfully. So we just, we found it. It was like a two minute walk. We found a coffee shop. Go inside. To our surprise, it was the most delicious fucking coffee shop we have ever tried the pastries were better than any bakery you could ever went to any anywhere dude so, so good and the coffee was so good oh my 
gosh, it was delish. So we get inside, dude. And keep in mind, we're still starving because um, we haven't ate since that Domino's. It's already, what, 11 a.m. this time? Uh, yeah, at this time, it's, a, it's 11. So it is exactly 24 hours since our last... No, sorry. 12. It's exactly 12 hours since our last meal. So we're just starving, dude. It's 11 at this point. So we walk inside of the freaking... um. Like the co- the coffee place, and then we see these pastries, dude. I get two cookies, two fucking croissants. He <laughs> oh, gets, those are yours. Yeah, I the thought you ordered. Mine. Oh, <laughs> two cookies, two croissants. Right, Jake gets like a ham and Swiss croissant, which I also Fire. ate. Which I also ate, and then they got like cookies and all this other shit, dude. I just give it all to me. I'm starving, and I was like, I I need something in my body to warm me up. So I get a latte, like a caramel latte with half and half and, you know, extra fucking hot. And so I start drinking that and I kind of brought my body back to where it was supposed to be. Not even though I was still kind of dying, but it really did help a little bit more. So from there, I search up a Walmart, found the Walmart, booked the Uber. And then um, we had the Uber come pick us up right there and then. Um, and we head out to Walmart. So the Walmart drive was around 40 minutes, even though the Walmart it- was... Two miles? Yeah. It was two miles and it was a 40-minute drive. It was intense, dude. I don't know how else to explain it. Just intense. Like, if you live in Mexico City, you're you're in, like, the busiest city in the world. It's like New York traffic hour. Yeah, I agree. So, hold up. Say something because I have an ice in my mouth. So, I'm just, like, really depressed right now because... Okay, now so, anyways, <laughs> we get back to... We're in the Uber, right? <laughs> going to the freaking Walmart. We pull up to Walmart, and this guy's like, get off, because I'm not going to go inside of Walmart because I'm not paying for the fee. So, we get off. We have to walk inside of the gates to Walmart. Far-ass walk. So, it basically, like, the way Walmart works over there, they have, like, their own, like, parking structure, right? And you have to, like, pay to get into the gates to let you even into Walmart or, like, the parking structure or any of that. The guy's like, nah, fuck y'all. So he leaves us, like, outside. So we have to walk inside, right? Scary as fuck. There's so many people out on the street, dude. And you're just, we stand out. Like, he doesn't speak Spanish. So he's over here blabbering in English, right? We stand out. With two fat cameras. Yeah, like, we we stand out, okay, to say the least. I didn't take my bag nowhere. I left my bag at home. I, even my camera, like, I would try to hide it in, like, the hoodie. I was just scared to get robbed, to be honest. So... Your phone, make sure you couldn't see it out of your pocket. It was this whole thing. So, anyways, we pull up to Walmart. First thing we find is a heater. It looks like a little toaster. It, Sold. Dude, you should have brought it home. If it would have fit in our bags, we would have brought it home. That was, like, the like the best uh, purchase we've ever gotten in our life. Yeah, yeah, but we'll say why it wasn't the best after. Something was happening with that heater, but I'll let you guys know when we get home. So, mm. we get this little toaster heater, which was exactly $100, right? It was 2,000-something pesos. So we get that. I bought like three jackets, a puffer vest. I bought two golden retriever blankets. Um, <laughs> you got a sweater. I got tights. Um, uh, snacks. Snacks, medicine. Um, That's it. Oh, hot che- Yeah, snacks and all that stuff. So anyways, we start checking out, right? And to our motherfucking surprise, we are at bitch-ass Walmart, right? No Apple Pay, but Nat didn't bring a freaking <laughs> wallet because Nat didn't want to get robbed. So now I don't have a card, right? So we start scanning everything. But before we even struggled with that issue, we're like scanning all of our freaking items right here. And then I don't know why. We're putting them back in the cart so we can leave already. Remember? So no, we had scanned all of them and we had put them to the side. But it was one of the last items that we put back into the cart. So have you guys ever been to Costco self-checkout? Okay, if you move anything out of like the checkout area, they basically say fuck you and you get like locked out of the system. So over there, it's a little bit worse because when you get locked out of the system, you're like locked out, period. Like you can't re-enter your transaction. So I'm like trying to find help, dude. The workers are nowhere in sight. We got this lady trying to sell batteries to us. <laughs> She's right there advertising her batteries. Hey, let me take a picture after you buy them. Let me take a picture yeah, after you yeah. buy them. I don't know why they do that. So they're trying to take a picture of the receipt with the batteries. But the batteries, we haven't even bought the fucking batteries. But she's like right here nagging at us. She's trying to rush us. us to buy them. Like, yeah, yeah. Like a picture, a picture. I'm like, lady, I'm not even done checking out. And I'm, my screen has a big fat red sign on it. There's no one to help us except this battery lady that she doesn't even work for Walmart. She works for the battery company. So she can't help us. Everybody, there's a huge line, right? And then we're talking English. It was just so <laughs> bad, dude. And so they can't even read what the screen is saying. And I'm trying to read it because I know how to speak Spanish, but I don't know how to read it like that. So I'm like trying to figure out all the acentos and all this. <laughs> and so we're trying to find the freaking lady. And then this guy ends up walking around and we're over here like, you know. So he comes, does it. So we have to rescan everything. And it does it again. <laughs> <gasps> it's because, so I had to hit checkout, right? But then it was like, 
uh, no Apple Pay or whatever. So I was like, fuck. So from the no Apple Pay, and um, thankfully Jacob had brought like a card. So we used that card to pay. So when the transaction was going through, it, w- it hadn't finished, right? My dumbass picks up the items and puts them in the thing. Automatic, argh, because we moved the things out of the checkout item. All right, we got to find this guy again. You know, he's got to redo it, rescan everything, and then do the whole payment. Dude, it was a nightmare. This battery lady's still over here, like, um, the batteries, the batteries, like, it's still going. And I'm, dude, we are so frustrated because the people are so mad at us because we're taking so long. We keep fucking up the scanning. The guy over here is nowhere in sight. The self-checkout person, there never is, though. Even here in the States, there's never someone at self-checkout to help. So this guy's nowhere in sight. Jacob's over here like, what do we do? What do we do in English, right? And everybody's looking at us like literally like this. It was so bad. (laughs) And so anyways, we find the guy. This time it was a girl that came. She helped us. We checked out. And then um, our friend, he was the one buying the batteries. So then he bought the batteries. And then we, our Uber's outside, dude. We're trying to run outside. And then when we're running outside, the lady stops the guy who bought the batteries, our friend who bought the batteries. And she's like, let me take a picture. Let me take a picture. And we're like... Looking back, like, bruh. But it's because what had happened was that he had checked out, right? He had already checked out, and the lady had left. The battery lady had left, because I think we were taking too long. So we're leaving. But then she caught us when we were leaving, so then she gets the batteries, (laughs) comes all the way back to self-checkout to take the photo, which, keep in mind, we're already over here. The Uber's literally outside, and we don't have bags, because self-checkout doesn't give you bags. You have to go through the actual line. So now we are carrying, like, a freaking... Uh, what, a heater, toaster heater. The puffer that she bought, I stuffed the pockets of it so we could take it outside the instead snacks, of the bags. Like so much shit that we had bought. We're trying to hold it without bags. Battery lady sends us all the way back. Take the photo. Get our stuff. Come back. Make sure that Uber doesn't leave us outside. So we run outside. And then um, we get in the Uber, thankfully. But we couldn't even find the lady because she was on the other side. Because she couldn't get in the parking structure. Because she didn't want to pay. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was this whole thing. We, anyways, we end up finding the lady. We get inside. And then it's like a literal hour back. Actual hour back. And the whole time, it's nothing but the lady honking, dude. Dude, she was like one of the mad drivers. Like, beep, 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 beep. She wouldn't let nobody cut her off. She was beat up uh, if there was a gap in between her and the car. Dude, it was just wild with her. Yeah, she was pissed. She didn't want nobody cutting her off. No. Nope. Like, her Uber time was taken very seriously. <laughs> so I fall asleep half of the, I think it might have been half the ride. I wake up to... Um, uh, what was the thing saying? What? I don't remember. Remember the lady with the sirens? Like, um, oh. it wasn't, what was it? All right, I'll make it up. Like, paleta. But it wasn't paleta. So I don't know what it was. No, it wasn't food. I think it was batteries. And I think she was said like, I, th- I heard baterias. It was batteries. It was, I don't know what else they were selling, but it's like an automated radio thing. But the car that had the automated radio was behind us. <laughs> it was so loud, you guys. That I, And so we were stuck in this traffic, right? So I wake up and I'm confused as fuck because I'm hearing this like siren, but you can't even tell what the siren is saying because of how loud it is. And we're at this like red like stop thing and we're just there for like 20 minutes. Nothing but this siren like <laughs> right here. <laughs> So I am just, like, hoping, like, that Bad Bunny legit comes down and gives me a kiss. Because this better be worth it. So, and Jacob, too. Give him a kiss, too. Nah, nah, so nah, nah, nah. So I'm You're just weird. like, this better be worth You wouldn't take a kiss from Bad Bunny. Don't Hell lie. Hell no. Nah. Don't lie. You Honestly, take a kiss from Bad Bunny. Hell no. Nah. Don't lie. It's just because the camera's on. I'll now. take he told two. Me- <laughs> 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 yeah, so I'm like, Bad Bunny, you know, he better personally come say hi to me because... There, you know, things are just starting to pile up. I think we were so, like, sleepy, too, because we hadn't really slept. So, anyways, we get home an hour later from the Uber. Literally get my heater, open that bitch, set it up, turn it on. Immediately, the power almost goes out. <laughs> the lights are flickering because <laughs> of the heater. <laughs> it's like when you plug in an iron or at my house and make sure. It's like you plug in the iron, you plug in the, the hair curler, and the power turns off. Yeah, yeah, it was too much. Mm-hmm. So... The lights start flickering. <laughs> I Dude, this whole house can break down, but I'm not disconnecting this heater, right? So I leave that bitch, tr- like, literally connected. High power, high heat. By this time, we're trying to go to sleep already because we're super exhausted from the fights and everything. So keep in mind, it's around, like, like 12 p.m., 11, no, 1 p.m. No, it's, like, 1. I think it's 1 about to be 2. And that Bunny concert isn't until 8 p.m., 8.30. Okay. Yes. However, I got a message from our friend saying that we were going to leave at four. So we hit the bed. It was almost too freezing. 
tired, annoyed, pissed, everything. And I'm like, shit, we got two hours of sleep, bet as fuck. But I had pulled out my laptop because I was going to edit a little bit. So I start editing, and I'm like, dude, I'm going to be dead at Bad Bunny. So I shut that bitch, put it to the side, and I'm like, I'm going to take a nap. We open my little golden retriever blankets, put the, layer them on. I opened my check luggage because in there, Jacob had some more, like, clothes. I didn't bring sweaters, right? I was going to – I bought new boobs, babe. I was going to use them. <laughs> but I didn't think about the weather, so – I used all of Jacob's like sweaters and hoodies and everything. I layered them on. And, and we connect we, the beds. Yeah, yeah. We connected the beds. We got the golden retriever. Talking about golden retrievers. Can you guys stop? <laughs> They're fighting. So we connect the beds, right? We turn on that heater, lights flickering and shit, golden retriever blankets ready. And then we're like, okay, we're going to cuddle. You're going to cuddle me. And you're going to give me all your body heat because I need this in my system. I'm still dying at this point. So we go to sleep. Only to find the blankets, I mean, the the, the, bed. the beds start going like. So, because it's like a small, it's not even a twin bed. It's like a, like, like a bed for like a six-year-old, bruh. Yeah. And when we, when we combine them, I'm in the middle of both of the beds. And like 30 minutes later, I'm like my, this part of my body and this part of my body are on each side <laughs> of the cushion. My back is like being held by the air or something. <laughs> and I'm having like back problems. So I'm like, nah, I can't sleep here anymore. And I, I like separated the bed and I started going on my own bed, right? Yeah, but then that made me mad because, like, like... You don't love me! You don't love me! I was me. cold, bro. So we tried to push these beds together, but the bottom of the beds had no grip. You know how normally bed frames are pretty sturdy enough that when you, like, push on them, that you don't really move, right? Whenever you want to move a bed, you got to put a little bit of force to move it. Not these beds, these. if you get on it, it'll slide on the other side yeah. of the room. <laughs> so the beds obviously started opening slowly, and it was just... Yeah, it was, it was a nightmare. So we're like, all right, new technique. We're going to go to the bed closer to the wall... And then you're going to be on this one, but that didn't work either because he ended up still being on the crack. And the, yeah, it was just <laughs> whatever. We get in a little bit, I think like an hour of sleep. But thankfully, our friends messaged us that we were actually leaving at 540. So we had an extra little hour to sleep in because, you know, we got to get ready and everything. So we sleep for a little bit, wake up. And I was like, are we going to really go to Bad Bunny right now? That's how tired I was. I was excited. I was like, let's get it. Bad Bunny, baby. I was not ready because my body had finally got body heat. And I was like, dude, I'm literally going to go freaking die again. In the heat, literally coldness. So, anyways, we get up, we start getting ready, um, and then you know I, I start looking a little good. So, and I'm starting to get excited, <laughs> and then my body chills were no longer there. So, at this point, your yes, body it, was normal, right? Yeah, yeah, it was okay. like at a normal. Yeah, it was cold outside, but it was just like normal cold. It wasn't like hypothermia cold like I was earlier when my body got too cold. So, anyways, we get ready. And then the girls, like, well, the people that we went to, they're like, okay, like, we're just waiting for the Uber. So we thought it was going to be, like, at 540-ish. It wasn't even an Uber. It was, like, a private driver that we had gotten. What is it called? A, sh a chauffeur? Chauffeur? Chauffeur. 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 So, um, you know, we're waiting, and then it, like, hits 6, and we're like, oh, like, I wonder where this guy's at. You know, it, he was supposed to be here at 540. Nothing. And then we're starving, so, like, okay, you know. We're going to go around the corner and get some tacos. Yeah, yeah, the girls. So, me, it was three girls. It was me and the other two girls. So we're like, we're going to, you know, run over real quick to get tacos. You know, we'll get them to go. So when the guy gets here, we can just take them to the Bad Bunny concert, especially because it was going to be pretty far. So we go, we get the tacos, and then we're trying to find out where this guy's at because he's not showing up. There's like a weird, like, this guy's just not popping up. And there's no communications really going on. Yeah, like she was, um, because... The girl that we were with that had the communication, like, they were not really being clear with her. So she was confused, and we were all confused. There was no communication. So we're like, I wonder where this dude is at. So I was like, all right, whatever. I'm just going to call the guys. They can come around the corner. We can all eat here, and then from here, we'll leave. By this time, I think it's already, like, 6.30-ish. They come. We eat. Dude, we're done eating, and the guy still didn't get here. Bad Bunny concert started at 7.30, and at this point, it's, like, about to be 7.00. So she's like freaking out because she's trying to figure out how, what's going on. Are we even going to go to Bad Bunny? We don't even have our tickets to Bad Bunny, okay? The guy that was supposed to meet us at the stadium has our tickets. So we have to get to the stadium to get our tickets to go in, right? So we don't even have our tickets. So anyways, we start waiting a little longer. I think at like 7, I don't know, 15-ish, the guy actually shows up. We get in the car. And then it was the guy, the guy that was driving, and they had... Girls, <laughs> and they had an extra person, but we were already a lot, so we were six, and they came in a what? In a Tahoe? Yeah, a Tahoe. So, but the Tahoe it only had the I think the two seats in the back. Oh no, I did have three seats in the back. So we're all like, it was two, two, three, right? So what's that? Seven. Seven. 
So it's six of us, the driver, and there was an extra person. So the extra person had to lay down on the ground. We were like... No, why are we stupid? We're not six. We're seven, just us, because they brought their cousin, remember? So it's seven of us, plus the driver, plus the extra person. So it's four of us in the back, two on the two seats, and then the guy laying down in the middle, right? (laughs) And then the guy in the front and the the other guy driving. It was like so many people were driving, and then this shit gets tight real quick. Like us in the back, it was four people in the back. You know how small those back seats are? We were so crowded to the point where one of our friends hopped to the trunk. Where you put like your suitcases and luggage, they hopped to the front and she fell asleep right there. Yeah, she just lay down, which thankfully made it easy for us to be in the back because we were so tight back there. Mm -hmm. Whatever, it's like a two hour drive to fucking Bad Bunny because all this traffic. 10 miles and two hour drive. That's how far it was, 10 miles. Dude, nothing but traffic. Disgusting. Mm, I wish I was that pink chink right now. Anyways. (laughs) <laughs> take forever the people at the stadium keep calling us where are you guys at the driver was looking ignoring the people it dude, was he was getting so many phone calls and he'll just ignore dude, dude, he was that's what he was doing to us i'm sure he was oh, doing that shit to us that. so whatever he's getting ignored it's this whole thing we pull up and we're like in the alleys of like the heart of mexico city right we're it's, talking it's the azteca stadium or something where uh america plays So we're in the heart of this. Imagine the downtown of downtown, right, right there. And so we're like, we're never going to make it. Like, Bad Bunny is going to be done performing by the time we get there. So our last resort is get out the car. So we get out the car, right? We get out the car. We're like, we're just going to walk to the fucking stadium. So we hide the cameras. We hide the bags. Jacob had this puffer. Um, I had a puffer, and I put Nat's Louis bag inside. So I unzip it, put it in, zip it up. And I'm, like, walking like this with a big old stomach. Yeah, and his camera, and then I put my camera in between my, like, sweater. Bro, because someone could mug us. or just, like, 100%, dude, there was pull up people, a knife, and we're, 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 we're done. Here, we're take dead. it. Yeah, so there was, like, people on the streets. It's, like, a, a literal movie. I don't know how else I can explain it to you guys. So the, Yeah, a, the trenches, bro. Like a movie, like an actual movie. So we're, like, going up in these little, little streets. Legit about to get run over because nobody gives a fuck about pedestrians here. Like, it's not pedestrians have the right of way. Nobody gives a fuck. Like, it's every man for itself. So if we didn't move a little bit, your car, the car would actually take you. So you had to, like, move to the side. This whole thing. So we're walking for about, like, what are they arguing about? <laughs> I have no idea. What are you guys arguing about? We're walking for about like 10 minutes, like through the trenches of Mexico. And basically we were lost. Yeah. So we start, we get to like towards the front of like the stadium ish, not the stadium, but like you could see the stadium. And then we asked the cops like where the gate is because they're telling us gate eight. But we're like, bro, we have no clue where this shit is at. So we ask where it's at and they tell us it's towards one direction. We start walking another 20 minutes in that direction in the heart of Mexico. Right. Anybody could snatch us. But and when you're close to the stadium, you don't have any cell phone connection. So you have to walk, like, another five minutes away, and then you can get the cell phone connection. Yeah. So we get, anyways, we get to the stadium to the very front. And, dude, it's a zoo. Like, that. it's an actual fucking zoo. I don't know how else to explain it. There's a bunch of people. Everybody's mad. And we start hearing, like, chanting. Like, they were saying culeros. Basically They're saying, like, like culeros. that's not something you want to hear the crowd saying, right? And, and like, then there's like a thousand cops on the other side just lined up in formation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like they were about to raid this mm-hmm. bitch. Like, that's literally what it looked. There People was horses. People jumping the fences. Yeah, there was horses with cops and just, dude, SWAT teams. Like, that's what it looked like. So a little bit of context on this. So Ticketmaster had like a little glitch in their system. This is why you go with SeatGeek. This video is not sponsored, but <laughs> bro, SeatGeek, hit us up again. They're like, the tickets are not valid or anything. Um, which one of you is it? It's Ellie. Ellie could wait. Ellie could wait. She's patient. All right, so Ticketmaster had a glitch, and this t- this uh, went viral on TikTok. Like, the Mexico City concert, there was thousands of people outside waiting to get in. Nobody was let in. The Ticketmaster tickets were not valid, and the people on the other side, the what's it called, the security guards that were uh, letting people in, yeah. they weren't letting anyone in. They had the barricaded down. Nobody was getting in. People were jumping over, and that was, like, the yeah. scariest part. Everyone was pushing each other. So, go. That's You're going too ahead of the story. Go, go, go. You're go, going, go, go. You just summarized everything so <laughs> basically we can't get to the front because we're lost because we don't know where we're supposed to meet the guy who has the tickets because we can't even get inside of the concert without our tickets right this guy's inside of the freaking concert so we're trying to call him but there's no service so there's so much non-communication here this guy's like oh yeah like i'm in the front of the stadium tell the cops um, that let us in whatever no 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 the guy's like we're in front of the, st- I'm in front of the stadium. Come find me. I have your tickets. So we're over here like dumb is trying to find this guy in the literal ants of people. And then she calls him like, dude, you're not here. Like we can't find you. There's so many people here. Like 
Like, show me exactly where you're at. So when he shows the girl where he's at, he's behind the gates. So he's not in the outside of it. He's in the inside of the concert. See what I'm trying to say? Like, he's on the inside. So he can't give us our tickets because the cops or the security have dropped the barricades to where people aren't going in. So there's no way for him to even get close to us. The horses are barricading the entire sides of the stadium because people are legit jumping, tr- like trying to get over. So they have everything shut down. So we're like, dude, how are we supposed to get the tickets? Like, how do you expect us to get close enough to get the tickets? So the guy was basically telling us to bribe the security to let him come to the end and to let us go to the end to meet, get the tickets and leave. That was the plan. So basically that's not, that's, yeah, that was just not going to happen. But so we're hopeful at this point. So we try to make our way towards the front of where you give your tickets and enter. Um, and this is where it gets scary. So this is where we almost died. Somehow we crowded so many people. I don't know how we got to the front. Me to be neither. honest, we created this chain. It was seven of us. We created this chain where we're holding our hands and we literally just pushed through, which I don't think was the smartest thing because we got ourselves in this situation. Push through, get to the front, and then... Like two rows down from us, they're fighting. People are fighting and trying to bang into the walls and everything, remember? What walls? Um, Into the barricade, like... Trying to get in. Oh, yeah. So, But he's talking rows as in this way, not back. So there's like rows, right, where you line up to go inside. So like the row rows one, this two, way. Three, there's like yeah, a yeah, whole yeah. bunch of rows. Yeah, yeah. So on the rows this side, it's starting to get heated, right? Like these people over here, yeah, they're climbing. I think one of the people was like climbed on yeah, top of Yeah, one of them thing. got up. And there, those people running inside, like people got in. And the, yeah. cops, the cops on the other side weren't doing anything. They're just standing there. Like, just waiting. That's so, why dude, people were doing in it. the inside, so actually, in the inside of the thing, they had around three rows of cops lined up to stop people. That's how bad it was. So, the people are climbing the barricades, screaming, like, let us in, let us in, drop the gates. Like, and then everybody starts chanting, like, push. That's when you know it's fucking scary. So, we're in the front. She's trying to bribe the person in front, telling her that the friend is on the other side, that he needs to give them the tickets, this whole thing. The cops basically like, or the person, whoever is there, no, it's not going to happen. People are, they were like, if I open this door, everyone's going to go in. Yeah, everybody's coming through. Like everybody, and they're not going to be able to stop it and it's going to become a shit show. So we're like, yeah, there's no way. But at this point, we're too far in. Like our ass is too far fucking in because people start chanting push. People are getting riled up and they're starting to push. It was so scary because I thought this was going to be like, like, I don't want to be any sense. I bring up a sensitive topic, but like the Travis Scott concert. Remember? Yeah. I so, thought that's what yeah. was going to happen. You know how people started like pushing? Yeah. So we're talking. I don't think you guys realize the amount of people that were here. I'm talking like 5,000 at least. So many fucking people, you guys. Like so, so many crowd and mad people. That's where it gets scary because these people are mad. And not everyone even had tickets that were in line. They were like, buy, uh, I'll buy your tickets, whatever, outside standing there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the people that were mad were just being dumb and saying, let us in, but they didn't even have tickets. Exactly. But everybody was just pissed, right? So then they start, like, pushing. And you can see the crowd starting to get tight, tight. And we're at the very front. So we're the first ones to go, babe. Like, we're at the front. And so I climb, like, on the side of the, you know, the alley. Stop it. <laughs> There's, like, the things that separate each row. So I start to climb on one of those, dude, and I can see. And everything, it, everyone's pushing. Everything is coming close, like so close. And I'm like, guys, we fuck this concert, fuck these tickets, fuck everything. We got to go now, like right this second. Everybody has to go now, 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 because everything's starting to push, 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 right? So my life goal was to go around through the first gate because this, it wasn't as tight on this end. They were pushing, but not as much as they were pushing over here. So I was like, we need to make it out this way and we got to get out. So I was like, it doesn't matter. We're not going to make it in. Dude, we, we need to get out of here because at this point... Bad we, Bunny was not worth losing our lives for. No, it wasn't. And if we wait one more minute, we would have died. Literally. People are getting trampled. It is horrid. So we got to go. We jump over it like one of the little like fence thingies. And then we just start pushing through all the crowd. Pushing, 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 pushing. These people are mad, chanting, yelling. You know, let us in. We make it through. And when we're at the end, we're like, we're not making it in. We're not because we're not going to the front of that thing again. Like that was it. Mm -hmm. so we had to think like bro what can we do so we call him again he's like the only way you can do it is if you tell him that are your tickets are inside and they're somehow going to let you in so we came up with this bright idea by me i didn't come up with this it was um our two friends that came up with this bright idea you want to explain the bright idea to them 
Yeah, well, yeah. So basically, they were just going to go up and bribe the um, security, security guard. telling him that we had an artist and that the artist... Um, knows him personally, knows Benito yeah, personally. Yeah, that they know like him that. personally and that we're supposed to be going in because we have VIP tickets, which we did have VIP tickets, and that um, we're supposed to be in and the, the VIP person is um, inside trying to get us in and this whole story, right? Somehow, the guy... <laughs> Took it. <laughs> it worked, dude. He that little plan. He took that shit. He took it and he was like, if your friend can come and meet me here, I'll let you guys switch your tickets. I don't know f- how this fucking happened. We split, right? The guys went to go do that and we stayed in the parking lot and we just waited there. This is the craziest part of the entire day, I yeah. think. So the guy comes out with the one in the, um, that was inside of the stadium with the tickets, comes out with like a couple of security guards, right? Yeah, yeah. They comes had him, out yeah. with a, sec- a couple of security guards. And he's like giving us the tickets, but we have to be right behind him because they see him come out and go into the front and with security. And obviously everyone's picking up on it. They're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. We're talking the crowd, right? Everybody's starting to realize this guy's coming out with tickets. So he's going to the front. Uh, how do we get in? So what happened is that the security guards or like the, the police with the horses, right? Oh, yeah. They escorted him to the front. But people are seeing this. So they see this guy hand these VIP tickets to us in the crowd, and that's what everyone goes crazy. Everyone was going crazy, following uh, us, trying to crowd in line, and the police trying in front. Trying to steal tickets. Trying that's to steal what tickets, literally. And the people in front were the police officers, like, they had to see your visual, your physical ticket. They're like, physical ticket, you're or you're missing, not going to get in. You're missing a whole step here. Oh, sorry. When we got the tickets, do you remember when we got them? So they, he handed it to us, and then people started to get riled up and saying, she has a ticket. She has a ticket. She has it in Spanish, right? And so everybody goes, who has tickets? The tickets. Da, da, da. It's, it becomes this thing, right? And it starts spreading through the crowd. And this is where it gets scary, dude, because I feel like we could have died there too. Dude, someone would have just snatched our tickets. And or someone could have literally bah, stabbed bah. us or something to get the tickets mm-hmm. easily. Thankfully, it was a lot of us, but still that shit was scary. So we were all holding hands with each other in a, like a single file line following that guy, but we get separated somehow. I was like behind no, you guys. No, so what happened is that she gives the tickets to each one of... No, she hides the tickets between her, like right here. And then she's like, we got to go now. But when we start moving, everybody starts following us and pushing and screaming. And they know that we're the key to get in, right? So we're starting to move. Scary as hell, dude. People are pushing, shoving. And then they made an opening for us, like... But not just for us. They kind of opened it for anybody who had tickets, but they didn't really announce it. So when we start going in, the security guards open a little peek, and they're like, you need your ticket to be able to go through. We had tickets. They start spreading it. The um, the girl who had our tickets, she starts giving them to us, like, low-key, and she's like, hide this, hide this, hide this. So I just put it literally in my pants because if not, someone was going to take it from I us. I put it in a Nats bag with her uh, in my jacket. So I yeah. put it in my Nats bag, zipped it up again. Yeah, because people would have snatched it. And people are pushing, 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 pushing. And the security guards are like, if you push, we're going to shut these gates. Thankfully, we made it just. So I think when one of our last ones went in, I don't know if it was you or I don't know who was the no, last no, person to go the in. No, no, it was the photographer. He was the last one, he, right? And he was so delayed, like three minutes behind us. And then they shut it because they, they were pushing. Mm-hmm. They were pushing and we thankfully made it in, dude. The security guards are like, you can't wait for him. You can't wait for him. You got to keep going. So I went in front, but I was like, what the fuck? Like, Jacob went after me. I was like, I'm not leaving. And then they were, like, screaming at me, like, you have to keep going. So, but I wasn't going to go with the... So I was waiting for him. Everybody, the security guards were so pissed. They were literally about to kick me out because I wasn't moving. And um, they were just screaming, screaming, screaming. And that's when you come through. And we get to the side where all the police are standing with the three follow uh, lines of police. And they're patting us down and everything. I have Nat's purse right here, so yeah. I didn't undo anything. So I have my ticket. I showed my ticket, put it back, zipped it up. And when the police see, like, I have a big old thing in my uh, in my jacket, they're like, hold up, take it out. They're, I, I couldn't understand a word that they were saying because they're speaking Spanish in Mexico, not in the United States. It's so much faster. So I'm like, uh. So I pull it out. They're like, what? how do you say makeup in Spanish? Maquillaje? Yeah, they were saying no maquillaje, no maquillaje. And I was like, what the heck is that? And I opened it. I'm like, I don't got nothing. I don't got nothing. And I don't know if the password, I think the password was in there stuff. There's like all of stuff. my stuff was in there. So I was like showing them stuff and they're like, maquillaje, maquillaje. And I was like, this, 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 this. I this. had so much like chapstick, lipstick, everything got tr- literally tossed. Some girl next to me had the makeup and she, I guess she wasn't ready and she couldn't put it on and she got mad and they made her throw it away. She grabbed it and she just smashed it on the floor <laughs> in front of them. Yeah, because she's probably pissed because all those people probably go in and take all Or maybe her stuff. friends didn't even go with her, like us. That would have been crazy. So this same girl decides to like chuck it at the ground, crack it, and then run. Yeah. Which was the worst thing she could have done because they chased her down and literally dropped her, even though she had tickets. I don't know what ended up happening right there, but yeah, they dropped her and then 
Um, her friend was like screaming. It was this whole thing. Anyway, Jake gets through. We go through and we're like happy to be alive. Somehow we made it through. So did like a few other people. But then they shut it because people were pushing and we made it through, dude. And we got in to Bad Bunny. VIP suites, y'all. Yeah. Unlimited snacks, drinks. There was like food on the table. It was the best I don't know. It wasn't the best experience, but it was a cool experience. Yeah, it was different. It was like our life on the fucking line. Would I yeah. ever do it again? Probably not. But I mean, you know, it was it was cool to live live in on the line for a little bit. We felt like celebrities, low key. Celebrities, bitch. I did not feel like a I celebrity. Felt like a cele- when he was like transporting us through the front. No, I felt like a person who almost died. Yeah, that too. Not a celebrity. <laughs> it was horrid. It was really it was scary, so you scary, guys. Though. Don't recommend it at all. Horrid. Anyways, have fun a bad bunny. We leave. Um, I don't even want to talk about finding an Uber to get back because after the show, you know how everything gets crowded. No, wait, crazy. you're skipping a part. Like bad that was Bad Bunny's performance, but he was so tired of performing because he did a matter of like seven songs in five minutes. He was like remixing them, like singing like 30 seconds of each part. And skip it to the next song. Skip it to the next song. Skip it to the next song. Like he wanted to get out. You remember that? Mm-hmm. It was so like, damn. He was we, tired of this. We saw Bad Bunny in LA back in I think February. Ten out of ten experience. And Bad Bunny was a different person this time we saw him, and I think it was just because he's so tired. And I think Bad Bunny definitely needs a break. He looks like really worn out, and also he probably found out what was going on during that concert. So exactly. I think that also probably um bummed him out a little bit. But Be- yeah, he did look a little off because to be like. Well, the ground seats where the pit is, they were supposed to be full, but mm-hmm. only a certain amount of it was full. It was like an empty it was, concert. It was type pretty vibe. empty, bro. Yeah, it was pretty empty, and I can't imagine how like sad he was. Yeah, that's but crazy. um, yeah. Anyways, Bad Bunny, fun as fuck. We had fun. Had to find a freaking Uber back. That was a show. We get home. Whatever. Next day, um, what happened the next day? Where did we do? Did we go shopping? No, the next day. That's when. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fr- we went shopping. Yeah, so the next day, we get an Uber, right? This was, like, late. We woke up, like, at 11, right? We wake up so late. Um, Our friends actually had to go do some other stuff. So it was kind of, like, we were kind of alone. We're like, but that's not going to stop Nat from shopping. So we get ready. We call an Uber, and we're like, we're going to go shopping, you know? Go to the mall. Bro, biggest mall I've been in, actually. It was, like, five-story mall. Genuinely huge. So, so big. So we shop. You know, we buy all our stuff. Have fun. And then... We get an Uber to go back home, and then this is where, again, the shit shows. There was so much stuff that happened at the mall, too, but it's just this podcast is getting so long, so we're just going to skim through it, get to the big parts. Get an Uber. We decide to go out to eat to this steak place. Bro, so, the steak that our friends ordered, they ordered medium. Babe, you're missing sorry, a part. Sorry, sorry, You're getting sorry, excited, sorry, sorry. and you're missing a part. Go, go, go. From the trip, from the freaking mall to the steak, we crash. Oh. <laughs> That's what you're missing. I forgot. Dude, our Uber crashed. It wasn't his fault. So, he, I don't know. The sm- streets in Mexico are so small. He's turning around a car, but the car is reversing in the middle of the street. And it goes. And it was he, not. It was. Boom. But it was like, boom, and then. Yeah, but it hit us head on, like, pretty fucking hard. Dented the car. It, it wasn't a scratch. It was like a. Like and it was like a, the car that hit our Uber driver was like a super B of minivan. Like, got hit, like, 20 times that same day, probably. Yeah, like, so beat. The Uber just left. He's like. I'm not going to stop. And he I'm, just goes. Yeah, but his poor car got pretty Dude, beat. I, I feel know. bad. But yeah, he, he got in that. But look, I, I do feel bad. But at the same time, my boy took the red light. To be honest, I think oh. the guy. So the reason the guy was reversing was because the light was like red. And then the other guy's light was green. So he was in the way of the people going this way because he had took the red too. Do you see oh, what I'm trying to say? I get you. So he was trying to reverse to make way for the people to keep crossing. But our Uber driver, when it turned red, he didn't care. And he went. So he got in between the reverse scene. I think they were both in the wrong, but yeah. whatever. Regardless, his car got fucked, and he was like, this guy's not going to fix my car, so he just left. Anyways, we got, we got a steak place, and that happened. So, we, yeah, we pulled to a steak place. Our friends ordered a steak medium. Like, it's supposed to be cooked. He's, he gets it, puts a knife in it, and it's jiggly. So yeah. he opens it up, and it's raw, literally raw, not, like, rare. It's pink and, like, yeah. mushy. Like, it is just not gotta, pink. It is red. Like, you just got it out the fridge. And I'll post it on like, my spam if you guys want to go see it. Yeah, it was the nastiest looking steak ever. I like my steak pink. That was red, bro. It was literally jiggly red blood. Just, it was, the cow, I could hear the cow mooing. That's how freaking raw it was. It was disgusting. He, Ugh, it gives me the chills. He asked like a waiter, like, what is this? And then the waiter didn't even know what he ordered. So he goes to call the manager. The manager sees it. And he's like, all right, we'll get you new steaks. It yeah. was for both of them. 
They pulled out new steaks. The steaks were pretty fire, though. Yeah, after they were cooked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After they were cooked. (laughs) Horrid, horrid, whatever. Anyways, we eat. Um, We got, like, these tacos. uh, What was it? Pastor tacos. Yeah, and then, um, anyways, from there, we walked to the pharmacy, got medicine, everything, and then we got an Uber. We went back home. It was at around, like, I think we got home, what, like, 10, 11-ish? Yeah. And I was done, dude. Like, I was so, so tired, so, so done. But I, we still edited. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's what we did. We got home, we edited, you know, the jazz, our friends went to downtown and like uh our other friends were like uh at this like other concert. It was like everybody was kinda doing their own thing. Anyways, regardless, we Oh, we forgot a crucial fucking step. So that same day that we woke up at eleven, you know what we wake up to? Cleaning ladies downstairs. And we're like, oh Why is there random gosh. people here? So we go downstairs and the lady's like, Um, when are you guys aren't you guys supposed to be checked out already? It was like eleven thirty. And I'm like, um, no, we're leaving till like tomorrow. And she's like, um, no, you were supposed to check out at 11. So we come to find out that our Airbnb was only booked for one night instead of two nights. So we were getting kicked out of our Airbnb. <laughs> that was just the cherry on top. But that's fine. We got that resolved. We talked to the owner. The owner was like, I'll give you guys an extra night. We figured it out. It worked. But yeah, we, that could have ended really badly. Dude, that was imagine really bad someone thing. booked the next night. We yeah, we've been, been so fucked. Yep. Nowhere to stay. So fucked. Anyways, travel day number three. Three. Yeah. So we're going back home this day, right? Um, we end up leaving to the airport at like 10 a.m. Flights are at one. We get to the airport. Everything's pretty smooth. We get to the airport and then we do all the check-in, all that stuff. Our friends get like some stuff thrown out, perfume, some other stuff <laughs> going through security. Everybody's being an ass. Everybody at the airport is mad. The typical, typical, typical stuff. We're at the airport for about three hours because we got there pretty early. Um, we wait and then our flight didn't even have a gate. So we're like, what if our fucking flight is canceled or delayed? It was like, a, we just didn't know what was happening. Um, anyways, time comes, we get our flight announced on the intercom and we're like, okay, we have to go to, you know, whatever gate it was, we go to it, board our flight. And then we come to, um, you know, I'm prepared, bitch. Like I have two blankets, a neck I pillow. Have everything, everything you could, I'm like, this is not happening to me again. <laughs> so we pull up, you know, they take my blanket, they take everything. We sit down in the plane. As soon as that plane is done being on top. Jacob gets up. He gets me my blanket. He gets me everything from the oh, thing. Oh, because we're in the exit, uh, the emergency exit. Yeah, yeah, chairs yeah. Again. So he gets me everything down. You know, we lay down. It's all cool. Um, and then you know, I'm like, fuck. We're only an hour away. I'm about to go see my dogs. We're supposed to land at 3 p.m. You know, it's about to be a real fun time. We're an hour and three minutes away, y'all. So, then I hear, <clears throat> that's exactly what it sounds like. It was. Um, we just received word from Tijuana that the weather skies, conditions that the weather conditions are not allowing us to land. Unfortunately, it's a little bit too gloomy, and we cannot land safely. We will be returning to Cabo to land and wait until further notice. Dude, Ba-doom. mind y'all, our flight's going this way. Los Cabos is back here. There's like another airport over here, dude. Yeah. So we do an hour coming. back. Back to Cabo. It wasn't an hour. It, it was, was like a, it's an hour coming back to Cabo. From where we were wow. at, it was an hour back to Cabo. So we come back. Cabo is two hours away from TJ. So we just did an unnecessary hour coming back out of our way, land in Cabo, and we wait in Cabo for about three fucking hours. This is where we found that wing place that didn't have fucking wings at <laughs> when we were starving. Yeah, that's where we did that. So we thankfully this time, so for Cabo, they let us get off of the plane and just eat at um the first time they made us stay in the plane. So that was, I mean, the good thing. We got off. We ate. Come three hours later, or two hours later, we get back on the plane. Then we have to drive, I mean, fly two hours back to TJ. We end up getting home. So we get to TJ, I think it was like uh, probably like 7 p.m. But then from TJ, you have to do all the security, CBX, all of this shit, get your bags. And then we had to get an Uber to take us Back to our house, which is another two hours. My dogs were supposed to be picked up at 3 p.m. But since our flight was, I don't know, delayed or super freaking delayed, I couldn't pick up my dogs. So I had our friend Taylor pick up my dogs. So my dogs were at home waiting for us. Anyways, we get home till around, what time was it, Jake? Like 11 p.m.? It was, no, hell no. It was like 12. Yeah, it was all, like, I think it was like almost 12. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we ended up getting home at almost 12 when we were supposed to be home at 3. Dude. So. That was our exciting Mexico trip. We did get home to very cute retrievers, and now we're literally about to leave them again, and I'm so sad. This does not end the story yet, because tomorrow is the last day we're going to be here, right? 
Yeah. We're I'm leaving. so drained. I just want to fall asleep right now. We're flying again, y'all. Like, after all this traumatic experience, we're doing it again. Yeah, and we were actually supposed to cancel this trip that we're going to. Like, we just found out we were going to go to because I got a text from Gabby, and she really wanted, like, she asked me to go with them. I mean, to go with her. And how was I supposed to say no to Gabby? I freaking love Gabby, so she told me to go. But we were going to cancel it because I just feel, it's like, I, I was not prepared. I genuinely have this, like, feeling that I'm not ready to be a mom, and I don't think I will be ready anytime soon just because there's this guilt that I feel with leaving my dogs on a trip just for me to go have fun. And the fact that we just left them two days ago and we're going to leave them again for another five days, it just feels so wrong. So we were like, we're just going to cancel it. It's not worth leaving my dogs alone. But then, like, Gabby texted me that, and I was like, dude, like, how am I going to leave Gabby alone too? And it's just so much. So, um, yeah, after this trip... We're done flying for so long. I'm done leaving my dog. And no, it's not even... If I can take my dogs to any trip, I'll drive. I'll take them. But the issue is the dogs. Like, I don't want to leave them anymore. It's not fair to them at all. It's really not yeah. fair. Not, no trip is worth leaving them. It really isn't. That's why we were going to cancel the other trip, that, this trip, that, the cabin trip. Um, but yeah, we're going to end up going anyways, which I'm excited for, for the snow and to see all our friends. You know, we, we really like everyone that's going on that cabin trip. But, um, yeah, I just feel so bad leaving my dogs, dude. I think we might just shorten the trip, uh, make the days a little shorter just because I don't want to leave them for a long time. If but that's possible. Yeah, I just – or we might not go. I don't know. We're still debating. <laughs> nah, we're going. We just bought some clothes today. So. Uh, yeah, it's just too much. We're just. I think we're tired, and then we're just drained, and it's just too much. Dude, this storytelling that you just did right now reminds me of that same – the whole, like, experience. Like, you explained it so well and in detail. I'm – Proud of you. I like my storytelling, my throat hurts. <laughs> Your throat hurts? <laughs> yeah. I put so much passion into the stories because I want people to feel what I was feeling. It's because you're the you're type of person to talk and you give passion. Like, whatever you felt at the moment, that's the passion you're going to give speaking. Uh, yeah, because I want people. them to feel it. Like, uh -huh. I want you to know how mad I hey, was when, like, Domino's watching, wasn't ready. watching, everybody watching is, like, mad with us. Like about I the hope experience. so, yeah. I want them to, like, know, like, what it was feeling. That's was, why, if, like, I feel like I'm so passionate about it. It was so sad, though. Like, there's so many people that paid for tickets and they didn't get in. For bad money? Yeah, yeah, so many people. So sad. Sad, sad times, but yeah, that was our Mexico trip. I'm so sorry if we bored you guys uh, with this long-ass fucking podcast of us just bitching. Um, we're so, so sorry, but when you're seeing this video, we are actually in Colorado right now. So text me and let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if I'm tired, if I'm jet-lagged, because we're literally leaving at 3 a.m. to the airport. Also, comment who you think is going to win the World Cup. Argentina just advanced. Uh, France versus Portugal. Maybe they already played. So whoever you think is going to win, all I'm going to say is Messi's the GOAT. He's going to win the World Cup. That's all I got to say. Messi's in the World Cup? Yep. Yep, Messi's going to the World Cup. Oh, shit. That's crazy. If he wins this, it's literally the cement of him being the GOAT compared to Ronaldo. <laughs> Christian Ronaldo. Suey. All righty, guys. So we're going to close up this podcast because we need to go to sleep. Well, actually, I need to go grab the dirty clothes from our suitcase from this trip so I can wash it to prepare the suitcase for, for our next, next trip. trip. <laughs> I'm going to literally break down and cry right now. I'm so drained. But that will do it for today's podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Nat, for narrating today. Of course. Thank you guys so much for watching this video or this podcast. Sorry. And we'll see you guys next Thursday for our next podcast. Bye. Bye.